Hi everyone, this is Neil Reitertair, consultant, audiologist and director of Cluax. Thank you for joining me in my latest video using the iClearScope endoscope. And this is of a patient who attended with left-sided swimmer's ear. Swimmer's ear is a form of otitis externa, so an outer ear infection, and it's secondary uh, to getting water in your ear. And it's normally a bacterial infection. And this patient recently returned from holiday. And whilst on holiday, like most of us do, they were in the pool, swimming in the ocean, and also in the hot tub. And they got water in this ear, which then led to um, a bacterial infection, the most common type of bacterial, bacterial strain that leads to swimmer's ear is Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and that's a gram-negative bacteria. So bacteria can be um, divided into um, um, gram-negative or gram-positive. Gram-positive uh, bacteria have a really thick cell membrane, whereas a uh, gram-negative bacteria strain has a very thin membrane. However, um, although they have a very thin membrane, it's encapsulated into this really thick layer of lipids and it makes a gram-negative bacteria much more difficult to treat using antibiotics. In addition, gram-negative bacteria are more likely to mutate against any antibiotics given and any mutation can be shared alongside adjacent gram-negative bacteria so it can pass on the new DNA code, so neighbouring gram-negative uh, bacteria can also become resistant to the antibiotics. So they're a lot more difficult to treat. And Pseudomonas aeruginosa can also be found in normal tap water. Um, and it's one of the reasons why, if you've been watching my um, channel for a while, I'm very much against uh, getting water in your ear. Now, if you have 100 patients and they all get water in the ear, it doesn't mean that every single patient is going to develop an ear infection. But I would say approximately 3 to 5% will. And once you develop swimmer's ear, it's one of those things that even in the future, you're more prone to developing it in that ear. So this patient's right ear, uh, for some reason, it's resistant to developing swimmer's ear. Um, they had a previous episode of swimmer's ear and this they left it a couple of years ago and that was secondary to undergoing ear irrigation. They went to have their ears microsuctioned and there was a couple of failed attempts and the third occasion the person performing the procedure performed irrigation and it led to an ear infection. It was actually that painful that they went to their local walk-in centre uh, at the hospital who then provided my contact details. So this patient just did travel a bit of distance um, to visit me today and so now they mentioned they didn't get water in the ear because they were very careful in terms of swimming because that's triggered it in the past but they were in the hot tub and they're just wondering whether it, the steam uh, the moisture entered the ear and that's also a possibility but it could have been that they unknowingly got a bit of water in their ear and you can see the ear canals inflamed there's erythema there's edema so swelling and what we've removed wasn't earwax, it was infected debris and infected dead skin. Now, the eardrum is visible, it's intact. Uh, the midsection of the ear canal, uh, called the pars media over here, where you can see it's swollen superiorly. Um, it's quite red. And what I want to do now is just remove this layer of thick dead skin that's coating the pars interna region of the ear canal. So you can subdivide the ear canal in, in a couple of ways. Um, most commonly when I describe the ear canal, I talk about the cartilaginous portion, the outer third, and the inner two thirds. It's made up of bone, the osseous portion. But another way of describing different parts of the ear canal is separating into pars externa, which is the outer third, pars media, which is the middle third, and pars interna, which is the internal third. So this remaining bit of dead skin it's lining the pars interna. There's a bit of hair at the top as well, which I think we do remove. So I'm just coming out of the ear into the midsection, the pars media, and peeling the skin towards the pars interna now. And I'm using the fine end suction probe. Um, it's much better when performing skin peels. And also when you want a, a bit more precision and accuracy, so, i.e. when you're working very close to the ear canal or eardrum. The slight negative of the fine end is that 
the internal diameter is a, a lot narrower and so I think the one I'm using it's got an outer diameter of 1.28 millimeters and the internal diameter is about 1.05 if memory serves me correct uh, whereas a standard zona suction probe the internal diameter is about 1.6 or 1.7 so it's more prone to blockages um, so it's reduced suction but it, and it's also quieter so when we are working close to the eardrum it's very beneficial so we can reduce the noise levels and you're less likely to get clarinetting because there's less um, suction power but it just makes it a bit more difficult to get that grip and to remove so I'm just peeling it away just in the anterior recess there so we've written to this patient's GP to get some topical medications when you have got otitis externa and you don't have a perforation it's the best form of treatment is topical as opposed to taking oral medication which is more systemic um, you want it to be more localized and so I think there's a lot of research comparing systemic oral antibiotics and topical applied antibiotics for excited, otitis externa and the topical ones are typically much better so you just got the skin here it's just, this is the isthmus you can see the ear canal narrowed and it widens and this is the inferior section so it's a really thick piece of skin um, skin it's got this almost bluey greeny um, tinge to it so and you can just see that eardrum is macerated, so we kind of know there's been some moisture, humidity, uh, water, water in there. So not only can um, water introduce this gram-negative bacteria, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, as I described earlier, but that bacteria is what we call neutrophilic. It, it, it's um, optimal pH levels when the ear canal is neutral or even slightly alkaline. So most water is more neutral or even slightly alkaline so it not only is it introducing the bacteria hence why the bacteria is existing in that medium because it has the right ph level but the introduction of it into the ear is going to provide it with uh, the best environment because it's going to increase the ph of your ear so your ear is mildly acidic around 5.5 to about 6 ph on average and also the introduction of water particularly warm water will leach away any natural oils and sweats produced by the skin in your ear. And these natural oils and sweats help to maintain the acid mantle because these oils and sweats themselves are acidic in nature. But it, they also provide a hydrophobic coating, so it helps to repel water. Uh, with hot water, it's going to leach away these, hot, uh, these oils and sweats secreted by the ear, which then means the underlying skin will overhydrate it will absorb too much water and it causes the outer layer of skin then to swell and burst at the membranes and that then macerates the skin it breaks it down it makes it mushy and it then exposes the under layers uh, underneath that skin so if it's in the outer third of the ear canal it, it's going to expose the dermis and um, hypodermis layer or if it's in the inner two thirds where you only have the epidermis it's going to expose the periosteum which is thin membrane that supplies blood uh, and nutrients to the bone that it directly sits on so again just trying to peel some of this this is quite macerated here now when the ear canal is inflamed like this you're just going to be careful because you're more likely to 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 cut and abrase it it's more sensitive to skin so it's much easier to lacerate so there's more inflammation there so there's increased blood flow and the skin is a lot softer, so you're just going to be really careful not to graze the ear and cut it because then you're going to exacerbate that infection because the bacteria can penetrate deep into the skin. So I'm really happy with that. So it's a bit of debris there, but you're not going to get every last little bit out, especially because this ear is really, really narrow and inflamed, as you can see. Um, patient was really happy. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.